Myalgic encephalomyelitis patients who were given advice to rest have the best prognosis. As ME expert Dr. Melvin Ramsey explains, the degree of physical incapacity varies greatly, but the level of severity is directly related to the length of time the patient persists in physical effort after its onset. Put in another way, those patients who were given a period of enforced rest from the onset have the best prognosis. Since the limitations which the disease imposes vary considerably from case to case, the responsibility for determining these limits rests upon the patient. Once these are ascertained, the patient is advised to fashion a pattern of living that comes well within them. According to Dr Elizabeth Dowsett, virtually any ME patient can also be stopped from deteriorating further and at least stabilised, if not in time experiencing some level of improvement, through appropriate care and rest. Resting means completely different things at different severity levels of illness in ME. For some patients, resting may mean watching TV or sitting in a chair reading a book or having a quiet night in with friends. For the severely ill, these activities are not at all restful and indeed would provoke relapses. For the very severely ill, resting means lying down in a dark room, in silence and with little or no sensory input at all. It also means not moving physically or engaging in any type of cognitive activity. Clothing must also be comfortable and the room must be neither too warm nor too cold. For the very severely ill, a better term than resting would be complete incapacitation. The term resting implies that the inactivity is optional and this is not the case in the severely ill who are often resting, i.e. incapacitated, because it is physically impossible for them to do anything else. For moderately ill ME patients, resting means something somewhere between these two extremes. For the very severely ill ME patient, there will be no safe or symptom-free activity limit. Concepts of pacing or of keeping activity at a level which does not cause immediate or delayed symptoms are useless. In fact, a sizable proportion of the very severely ill may well be so badly affected in the first place because of overexertion in the early stages of their illness, because they were not told how important it was to rest or were not allowed to rest adequately. This is extremely common in ME. It is very difficult for the person with ME to be unable to do so many things and it requires enormous discipline to avoid overexertion. Severe ME restricts life to a degree that healthy people might find hard to imagine, but patients have learnt from bitter experience many times over, thousands and thousands and thousands of times, the extreme negative consequences of overexertion. Patients are reminded of this every week, if not every day, because even with careful control, limits can be misjudged or tasks can take a greater toll than expected. For a lot of patients, it's much harder to rest adequately than it is to keep pushing yourself to do things, even to the point of worsening the illness and experiencing genuine 10 out of 10 severity symptoms. It is often much easier emotionally to just keep doing things and suffer the dire consequences in the short and long term than to stand up to extreme pressure from friends, family and medical staff for these activities to be completed as they were before the patient's illness. Having to spend so much time, so many months and years resting or being incapacitated is much harder than most people can imagine. The problem of ME patients underreporting or underestimating their activity levels just does not exist. What I'm talking about here is not patients with ME all having to be as inactive as they all possibly can all the time. Of course, a person with moderate ME does not need to live with the same restrictions as someone with severe ME. The point here is just that patients must stay within their individual limits. As a general rule, a patient doing only 80% of the activities that they can do reliably every day without relapse or worsen symptoms is recommended. Increasing the activity levels of someone with ME beyond their individual limits can only ever be harmful. It really doesn't matter if this is done gradually or all at once, the result is the same. The evidence which, to some extent, 
shows that some CFS diagnosed patients are merely deconditioned and can be restored to health through graded exercise programs is based on patients who do not have ME. None of the various cardiac, cardiovascular, immunological, neurological, cognitive, muscular and other abnormalities present in ME sufferers, which together cause the high level of disability associated with ME, can be explained by mere deconditioning. Patients who improve with graded activity programs do not have ME. It should go without saying that treatment of one disease cannot be determined by studying a completely different and unrelated and mixed patient group. Yet this essential medical and logical guideline is all too often ignored when it comes to ME. In the case of ME, money seems to speak louder than logic, science or ethics. 